Hey, it's Steve, welcome back. Now you can certainly go to a dollar store and you can buy a case of wooden spoons and you can take them to a craft fair and you can engrave them, but you'll have exactly what everyone else has and your $1 spoon will be sold for $2. Now, you can also, if you have a CNC, take a piece of wood and you can 3D carve a wooden spoon. And yeah, it's gonna cost a lot more, but people will appreciate that quality. And in this video, I'll show you how you can create this spoon from scratch. And in the end, you can also laser engrave it. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is design a spoon and I'll show you how to do this. It's a bit odd, but it's actually not that bad. And I'm gonna use Fusion for this and I'm gonna start with a form. And I'll start with a sphere and I'll put it up on this side. Now, the, the, I wanna make the sphere the size of the length of my, of my ladle, the part of the ladle. And I'm gonna set that to say 80. We'll make a fairly big one here. Now you can see it's just a sphere, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna delete the top piece of it and what I have is a bowl now. And that's a good place to start. Now it's a more of a soup ladle than anything, but we're gonna change that. So I'll start by selecting the entire body here. And I'll just grab the sides here and I'll stretch this out. Now, I've already made it about the length, the, the length of the ladle, so it's the, really the width that I wanna change. And what I'll do is I'll squish that down a little bit so it now starts to look like a soup spoon. And the other thing I'm gonna do is actually make it a lot shallower. And this will be the, the depth of, of your ladle. So I, I, a, a stirring spoon is generally pretty shallow. So I'll make it about a third of what it was. And now you can see we've got something that looks like a ladle. So we wanna make it look like a proper spoon and again I'll go back to the modify here and instead of doing that I'm just going to select these two options here and I'm, I'm going to edit the, the the face here you can see and all I'm going to do is just haul that back a little so that the front of the spoon the nose basically is a little flatter and then on the back I'll take that and I'll actually stretch it out because this is where the start of the handle is. So I'll just stretch that out a little bit and maybe I'll even shrink it down a bit more. So there you go, you can see that it's starting to look like a like a soup ladle and that's what we want. Now next step is to make it thick because it's really only uh, one pixel thick. So I'll go back up to the modify here and I'll, I'll select thickness. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's make this five millimeters thick. And I will say, I don't want it sharp. I want it to be soft. And now when I hit okay, you can see it, it softened it right up. So there's our soup ladle. And again, you can see how easy this is. Now we need to put the handle on. And the way I'll do that is I'll select these two pieces on the end of the spoon where I want the handle. And now things are, pretty simple all things considered so again we have the faces selected and i'm just going to drag i'm going to hold down the the alt key or option key if you're on a mac and I'll just drag this out a little bit and maybe i'll actually flip it over to the top here so you can see it and you can see there it, it stretched it out a little now i don't want it to be too long and skinny there so i'll take the next layer you can see it actually created two new pieces here i'll take the next layer and i'll select both of those and we'll do that alt drag again the top here you can see that it's now it looks a bit like a duck bill so i'll hold the alt again and i'll click the arrow and drag it and you can see it created a new segment now this one will make fairly long and now this doesn't really look too much like a spoon unless you're making a measuring spoon. So let me select all of this and you can see what it selected there. And actually I'll pick even a bit more. I'll select all of this. And if I now crunch this down a bit and now we want the other anchors, 
you can see if I do that, now it's starting to look a little more like a spoon. Now I want it to flare out a little bit more here, so I'll select this segment right at the end. If I can find where it is. And I'll just stretch that one out just a bit. And it, sorry, we want the face again. And probably want to squish this up a little bit as well so it's so you can see you can do all kinds of interesting things here and do the same thing on this one and I'll also squish this one up a bit and move everything in now with these remaining ones I'll, I'll just tighten those right up all right so last thing we're going to do here is we'll we'll put select the two ends here again and we'll create one more segment and again i'll hold the alt or or option key and i'll drag the arrow and you'll see i've got a new a new thing and now for this last one what i'll do is instead of adding a new segment i'll just grab this point on the bottom sorry we'll select the point option, the nodes. I'll just grab this and get back to the front view and I can just drag this out a little and you can see it'll, it'll kind of straighten up the handle a bit and we can do a little more there as we go. Other than a bit of cleanup here, this isn't too bad. And I'll finish cleaning this up, but you can see how easy this was. It was generally a pretty simple operation. Again, we can do, uh, you can work on the faces, the, the nodes or the edges. And if I work on the edges here, let me zoom in so it's easier to see. And if I grab this edge and squish it back in, I'll see if we can create a spoon that has kind of a round end on it. So there's our handle. And now what, what I can do is spoons tend to be flared out at the, at the edge here at the end. So I'll just grab that last couple segments on the end and I'll flare it out a little. And then we'll taper in the neck. Grab the whole segment and so I don't want those two. Yeah, maybe I do. And I'll just pinch that in a little. So there you go. There's our spoon. And you can see how easy that was. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is save this. So I'm finished with this form. And I will export this to an STL file. And it's the standard thing you would do if you were making something for 3D printing. So I, I select it and... I'm not going to export it to Cura, obviously. I want the spoon and I hit OK and then I can just enter a path and save it to a file. So I jumped into Vectric VCarve. Now I'm not going to show you all the intricate details of importing an STL file. Those are pretty well established. Uh, but suffice it to say that I have uh, the front of the spoon, so, so the, the cup basically of the spoon uh, shown here and then I just created an outline so that I can work around this, which is a pretty standard practice when you're working with, with STL files, 3D files on vCarve. And I created three toolpaths. The first one, which I'll create in a separate file and I'll run it separately, is, is something that just carves out these two holes through my material. And the reason those are there is so that I can I can position this on my spoil board over, over pins that fit into a known distance on my spoil board and, and it ensures that everything is square. And then on the next job, I, I run the, the roughing and, and finishing pass for the spoon. So what it really looks like if I run these one at a time uh, and I go to 3D view, you'll see it. The first one cuts out the holes. The second one does the roughing path for for the front of the spoon, so that's the, the dish of the spoon. And then the final the final tool tool path here does the actual finish of the of the spoon. Now, once this is done, I take this board and I flip it over. Again, it's on those pins which are a known position, so I don't have to worry about alignment. 
and I go to the second print, the second CNC job. So the first tool path is the outline. It cuts the outline of the spoon and this will go all the way through the material. The, keep in mind the other side of this has already been, been cut with a finishing path down to the, the front of the spoon. But this will cut the outline and I put some tabs in here so that this doesn't actually fall out of the material. And then I run the roughing pass which does a little more work than the front one did. It actually uh, cuts down into the handle here a bit. And then finally the finishing pass on this side and there you have it. Now I'll send this over to the CNC. I'm not going to show you a whole bunch of detail uh, on what the CNC is doing. It's basically going back and forth with the tool bit. Uh, I'll show you some of the key points though just so you kind of get a feel for what's going on. Now I mentioned that there was three jobs here. The first one is the one that cuts the holes for indexing so I know where to place something. Then I do the roughing pass and finally the finishing pass on the front. And when all of this is complete, the front of the spoon is basically finished here. Now there's a couple of tool changes when I'm doing this job. There's an eighth inch end mill for all the roughing pieces and the outline, and then I switch over to the 16th inch ball nose bit to do the finishing. And all of this is possible with this Rapid Change tool changer. Rapid Change is not a sponsor of this channel or this video. I will do a re full review video of this tool changer uh, when I get a minute, but uh, I, I'm going to call it out here just because this thing has saved me so much time and if you are looking for a tool changer for virtually any CNC, reach out to the Rapid Change guys and, uh, and they'll help you out and again I'll have a video coming up soon. Now I flip the board over and I'm using those pins again to make sure that the board is in exactly the same place on the other side and I'm cutting the outline. There's some tabs there to hold the spoon in place. I mentioned those and then I'm going to do the roughing, the roughing pass for the, the contour of the spoon and finally the finishing pass and by the time we're done here this will look pretty much like a spoon. I can then pull it off of the workspace. Now a fair warning I, I screwed up here a little bit. I didn't go quite deep enough on, on the, the outline cut so I have a little bit of work to do. It's really thin though. It's about I don't know 0.1 millimeter. It's just enough to say there's still wood there. I finished up the cherry spoon and put some oil on it. Just mineral oil and it looks pretty nice. Now I, I'll also bring in a walnut one here and show you what the difference is. The, it, this design looks good in pretty much any hardwood. So the walnut one here, good close up. You can certainly go to a dollar store and you can spend a buck or two and get a spoon that'll do exactly what this spoon does. It won't look nearly as nice, uh, but it will certainly be cheaper. But since we are a laser channel, I, I did a little engraving here on the handle and I, I'm showing you just quickly. I put something on and just a little design just to dress it up a bit. And if you're taking these to like a craft fair or something, you're going to sell tons of them, but you'll sell even more if you can do some, some live engraving on them. And that's all there is to designing a, a, a kitchen utensil. It, it looks like a complex project, but in the end, even if you haven't played with Fusion, it's pretty simple to do. I walked you through the complete process from end to end here. And once you do one or two of these, if you play around a bit, even with the free version of Fusion, you, you can create these things in, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. They're fairly simple. And what you get out of it is a very high quality item that if you take to a craft fair, you're going to put all those other people who are engraving dollar store spoons to shame and people will respond. They will pay higher prices to get better quality. So give this a try. You can certainly do it. It's not that difficult. Now, before I wind down, I will remind people if you do like these videos, make sure you click the thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm uh, spot some, some value in, in these. Also, if you watch the channel on a regular basis, please click the subscribe button because that also helps. I'll put the full design for this spoon on the member site. And if you aren't a member and you really want to click the join button down below and you can get it. I've done a number of other videos on, on CNC carving and if you're really interested in continuing on this journey click this video up in the corner here and uh, go watch that one and I'll see you over there and get out there make your world and I'll see you next time.